Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing my May wrap up. Um, I'm going to be sharing three books that I read for the month of May. And before I do that, I wanted to talk about some things that are going on right now and have been going on for a very long time. I don't want to stay silent. I've been doing a lot of research on what books to read, what petitions to sign, what black owned businesses to support. So if you're interested, I created a little video of um, different books of different black authors, um, different genres. This is a book channel. Well, I wanted to recommend some books that you can educate yourself on race and racism and just topics, just things that are going on right now and are very important. I urge you to not stay silent, to use your voice to raise awareness, to educate the people around you because a lot of people, and it's surprising to see this, are staying silent and sad rather than, rather than really talk about it and understand that black men and women are being killed because of the color of their skin. Something very outrageous and horrible. We all might know or may not know George Floyd was murdered by a white cop who kneeled on his neck for over nine minutes. It was caught on video and it is very horrifying and, and sad to watch. <sighs> so all four officers have been charged and that does not mean that we should stop there and just ignore whatever has been happening. It means that we need to support our black community until there is justice. Justice for all the black men and women who have lost their lives because of police brutality and racism. Fortunately, white supremacists do exist. There are a lot of white privileged people out here in this world. I'm here to say that I am not black, but I stand with you and I will be supporting fighting against white supremacy, against institutional, structural, and systemic racism. Because I believe in love. Because I believe that every human being, every black person deserves freedom, dignity, and respect, and equality. So love is not a verb, it's an action. And when you stay silent, that is part of the problem. Now another, th another thing is to my Hispanic community. This isn't about division. I am tired of seeing Latinos and Hispanic saying that, why are we gonna stand for the black community when they weren't there for us? It's very sad to see this. Many people have told me, you're Mexican, why are you not standing for your own community? <laughs> no, I stand up for my community. I stand up for other communities. I want to become a good ancestor. I want to fight for what is right and not for only not fight for only things that hurt me and my community. We need equity and unity. It's embarrassing to see my own community try to divide people and it makes me super sad. We need to do better. So I will put a lot of um, information down in my description box. I will also be putting petitions that you can sign um, that I have already signed. I'm going to be sharing some books that you can educate yourself from and some bookstores that you can shop from. I have already shopped from some bookstores and I'm waiting for the books to get here. And um, we need to support our black communities right now, tomorrow, next week, at all times.
beings with their hands on bars, shackled in the world, are locked up here in the land of the free. I'm going to continue with my May wrap-up. Um, for the month of May, I read a total of 10 books. I plan to read 11 books, but I DNF'd one. I really hope I'm able to read it again because I'm kind of disappointed that I have to DNF it. Um, and I have I have heard pretty good reviews. I don't know if I DNF'd it because I was like uh, in a reading slump. I'm going to be reviewing three books today. Let me see. I'll be reviewing a non-fiction, a romance, and a fantasy book for today. Reviewing the rest of my books on another video, but I didn't want to make this video too long. I just wanted this video to be focused more on um, what is going on right now and how you can, how you're able to support and educate yourself. I read a total of 3,472 pages this month, which is more than what I read last month, so I'm happy for that. The first one that I read was We Should All Be Feminists by Shibimanta Nigoshi. Adichie. Let's wait for that to stop. Thank you. Okay, so Shimi Manda, see, she's a Nigerian writer of novels, short, short stories, and also nonfiction. Another of her popular books is Americana, and after reading this one, I really hope to get my hands on that one, so I have heard pretty good reviews on it. I really enjoyed reading We Should All Be Feminists. I truly recommend you guys reading this one. It's a very short essay, and I finished reading it in 10 minutes. So this is a non-fiction short essay with 48 pages, and the author just gives out a message on why we should be feminists, and she also includes a lot of experiences of her childhood or adulthood. The essay begins with the... Oh my freaking god. This is gonna be a bad... Shimamanda begins the short essay with a story of her childhood when one of her friends called her a feminist. She did not know what a feminist meant, so she went home and looked up the word. She also introduces stories of her growing up where people around her used to see feminism as a negative thing that feminists are unhappy and they never get married. In her case, feminism is un-African, not part of her culture, and she was only calling herself a feminist because she was reading too many Western books. So there are a lot of relatable things in this short essay that I really related to. Well, I've had these kinds of discussions in my family, and they always tell me, this is not a part of your culture, we weren't raised this way, and it infuriates me because I don't care if it wasn't part of my culture, I am going to believe in what is right. I believe that both men and women can be leaders and um, make a change in this world. Ever since, and I, I truly learned something from this book and I really like this quote that I'm going to read to you guys. It is, ever since childhood we are taught that boys are the leaders to something. If we do it over and over again, then this becomes stuck in our head and it becomes our mentality. And it's definitely very true. I was raised by um, thinking that boys needed to be the leaders. That became stuck in my head. And now that I'm older, I'm able to think differently because as a woman, I believe that all of us should be treated equal, disregarding what gender you are. I really enjoyed this short essay because it just gives us a perspective of um, of being a woman, to begin to dream about and plan for a different world, a world of happier men and happier women who are truer to themselves. So I rated this a 5 out of 5. It helped me talk to other people about feminism and what really feminism is. Okay, next book that I read is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Ossiman and it is about a sudden and powerful romance between a teenager and their house guest. 
during the summer at his parents' mansion. There is a sequel to this book called Find Me and I'm really hoping to read it very soon because I really enjoyed reading this book. Find Me, it just continues the story of Call Me By Your Name and if you have read it, um, the ending is kind of like a cliffhanger for me. It was kind of like a cliffhanger for me. It is also a movie which you probably already know because of the famous Timothy Chalamet. Am I going to say that I'm one of those million girls that are obsessed with him? Heck yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Okay. So, this is a romance and a coming of age story written in first point of view from this perspective of a 17 year old named Elio. He is recounting the memories of that summer with Oliver, their house guest. Since the narrative concerns a growing relationship between two people, I feel like with Elio's point of view it makes it easier for the readers to understand the events of the book. Elio's way of narrating the story is very poetic and passionate. But sometimes I felt kind of lost during the narrative and I had to reread to truly understand what was going on. But mostly in the beginning because I was getting used to the writing style since it's completely different to, to what I have read in the past. It was very easy to understand once you get used to and I had no trouble doing so. I feel like it was very slow in the beginning. Um, it doesn't really... Tr truly introduced many characters from the beginning until chapter 2. It introduces us to Oliver the house guest and it doesn't mention Elio's name in the beginning until Oliver says his name which can be very intriguing for some of us that ha that didn't watch the movie first. I feel like I really loved Elio's character. I feel like we really understand his perspective and we really get to understand his desire and his, and his ache for a guy who seemed out of reach, as mentioned in the book. But I feel like we don't really get to hear Oliver's perspective, and it was very hard to connect with him, so, um, and he was very hard to read from Elio's perspective. I expected more emotion. I feel like the romance took a little while to bloom. First half of the book, it's just so much desire, and it takes a while because he makes Oliver think that he that Elio is not interested in him and also because he doesn't know if Oliver is interested in him and he didn't know exactly what his feelings were. What I really liked about the book is how the longing and desire was described. It felt really real to me and it makes you feel empty and it just gives you a nostalgic feeling of those teenage years and it reminds me back in high school when I was waiting for my crush to text me back. <laughs> so, within the middle of the story, I feel like the longing, the longing and desire becomes kind of obsessive. When Elio goes inside Oliver's room and he wears his swimming tr trunks and he lays on his bed, I feel, I feel like that was kind of weird and kind of obsessive in his part. And there were a lot of other sexual things that we're not going to talk about on here. Um, just read the book. It also involves a, involves a peach. The author did s stick to the theme of the story, which is obsessiveness, friendship, and sexuality, because these are two guys that that are finding their sexuality. And um, Oliver, he doesn't think that it's okay. it's right. I feel like it was such a beautiful story about how much of an impact the past brings us, and brings us from our first love and how difficult it is to fall out of love for someone who fears they may never find that intimacy that they had with this person. Other than that, I really, enjoy I truly enjoyed this book and I rated it a 4 out of 5. Just last book that I'm going to review today, it is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book of the Mortal Instruments series and there are 7 books so I'm hoping to finish them. Um, in one or two years, hopefully. <laughs> I have a friend on Instagram that is also reading the books, and I think we started reading them at the same time, but now they're super ahead with them. This is a fantasy book, and um, from what I've heard, you should read the Mortal Instruments first before reading any of other Cassandra Clare's books. I don't know, there's just like different orders that you can read her books. To me, it's kind of confusing, and I just started reading the Infernal Devices series first. Um, but I'm not going to talk so much about that today. It starts out with Clary Frey, who goes to the Pandemonium Club, and she hardly expects to experience a murder. And not a murder of anyone, but three teenagers who are marked with odd markings. And that's the first time that she meets the Shadow Hunters, and she 
meets Jace, who is one of the shadow hunters. I don't know what a shadow hunter. They are war. They are warriors dedicated to get rid of demons and keeping odd werewolves and vampires in line. She is pulled into their world, and she gets to find out why demons are. Um, hunting her, why they're interested in her, and also why her mom disappeared out of the blue. This book is written in third person point of view, following Clary, our main character, telling vividly what she sees or experiences. Like the world was very easy to understand and imagine. Um, it was very fast paced. My favorite character throughout the novel was Simon because he seemed very funny and outgoing. He truly seemed like he really cared for Clary. On the other hand, Clary was super annoying and she drove me insane and nuts while reading this book. But I feel like she was very well developed in the beginning, like I said, she's very annoying and um, she's very selfish because she just thinks about herself. But I feel like in the ending she starts realizing that other people have it harder because when Jace tells her that his father died, the plots. Yeah, so the plot started out, started out very predictable. Towards the middle, it got kind of suspenseful. And I didn't have a lot of favorite parts in this book. And I didn't really feel many emotions while reading it until the end. Because there was a huge plot, tis, plot twist that made me want to order the next two books and read them as soon as possible. I haven't, by the way, but I will get to them. There were a lot of themes in this book from portents of family. For example, Clary's mother's disappearance. Um, she is willing to risk it all in order to find her. It was very relevant throughout the book because that becomes the main plot. She's trying to find her mom and figure out why she's able to see shadow hunters and demons and all that crap and all that stuff. Another theme might be loss of parents because both of our main characters, both of them have lost their parents. Clary, her mom disappeared, but she doesn't know if she's dead or alive. And then Jace, her, his dad was murdered. Did I just spoil it? There is a quote that I really liked on page 225 that relates to the loss of their parents, which is, and as Oscar Wilde once said, to lose one parent may be regarded as mismorph as misfortune. To lose both looks like carelessness. Clary, she defends herself and she says, I didn't lose my mother, she was taken from me by Valentine. And Valentine is, is, a, is the antagonist of the story and he was very well developed as well. His story is very well described in my opinion. And the theme of loss of parents, I think it becomes very important because it is very relevant and it has to do a lot with the plot twist. So I would truly recommend you guys reading City of Bones. Um, I rated it a four I rated it a four out of five just because um, the plot was very predictable in the beginning. It became kind of boring through the middle because it just kept on repeating things over and over. But as soon as we got towards the ending, it became very suspenseful. And like I mentioned, there was a huge plot twist. Once again, I put, I'm going to put all the links in my description box of ways that you can sign petitions or just informational articles that you, that you can read. Um, I will see you guys next time and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Bye!